Welcome to Scorched Earth. This is going to be a general reading for the sign of Gemini, Sun, Moon and Ascendant. Mid-month for March. So, from the 15th to the 31st or thereabouts. Um, first off, massive thank you to um, everybody who managed to push me over 10,000 subscribers. When I woke up Monday morning, I was absolutely delighted to see that that had occurred. Um, and it's all down to you, all of you guys, everybody who's subscribed liked, shared, commented, you know, sent me messages, reached out for personal readings, you know, and sent me donations, all of that kind of thing. It's so incredibly appreciated. I can't even begin to express it. Thank you so much to all of you. Um, it means a lot to me. So, yeah. Um, what else? Mercury retrograde has ended, went direct on Monday, on the 9th. We're still in the shadow period and we will be until the 29th, but for the most part, like the worst is over, so that's good. At least until June, when it goes retrograde again. Uh, Pisces season is very nearly over. It, uh, kicks in on the 20th, 21st, something like that, 21st. Um, <clears throat> so, bearing in mind that we're then moving into Aries, and that is the, you know, the beginning of the zodiacal calendar, essentially. If you've got new intentions for the year, for the rest of the year, like how you want it to go, maybe combine the new moon energy on the 24th and set some serious intentions because the energy will be there to support you. So it's good to know. Um, and I just hope the retrograde didn't batter you around too much. Like the, the Gemini seem to have really suffered. Airy, uh, not Aries, um, Aquarius really suffered and Leo's really suffered so like it's been a bit shit but we survived we've done it and well done Ooh. so <clears throat> with all of that said because it's a mid-month reading it's for a shorter period we're covering basically the 15th to the 31st um, I'm going to avoid clarifying if at all possible and I'm just going to pull three cards for you know the energy where you are now. Three cards for what's going towards you and then three cards for advice because I like to do things in threes for some reason. It's just very pleasing to me aesthetically so we're going to go with that because it works. Um, but do remember that time is fluid so you know although I read with the intent for you know that two week period it could kind of leech either side depending on where you are and what you're doing. So let's have a look at the collective energies. Three cards for Gemini. Where is Gemini right now, please? Wow. I like this. This is very powerful, Gemini. So, though they're all minor arcana that have come out, we've got the Six of Swords there, which is air energy. Thank you. We've got the Nine of Pentacles, and we've got the Six of Pentacles. I like this very much. At the bottom of the deck, we've got the tower, which I quite like too. Actually, I'm not even going to lie. So, <clears throat> the first card is the Six of Swords, and this talks about moving away from, from you know, from kind of choppy water into calmer waters. This is the idea. You're moving away from things that have been <sighs> perhaps a little tempestuous. A Gemini involved in a situation that was tempestuous. Don't believe it. A jest. A little bit. But there's a sense of you having put things in the right sense of you in your head and the, in the right place in your head. And perhaps there's been a triggering event, some sort of tower moment that enabled that to happen. Yeah. I did a reading a little while ago for Gemini and it was something along the lines of putting your sword down yeah and I feel like over the last few months that's what Gemini's been learning to do like sometimes opening your mouth and going on the offensive isn't necessarily the best play and because you're maturing because you're evolving you know you, you're starting to understand the sense behind that and from this card I feel like like it's actually starting to bear fruit right you're moving away from things that have upset you you're moving away from things that might have ordinarily triggered you you know and kicked off that famous kind of gemini sharp tongue you realize that life's a little bit too short to be fighting all the battles on all the fronts all the time right picking your battles and actually 
really preferring to honor your own peace. Like you're understanding the value of your own peace now and moving more to protect that than to fight all of these battles on all of these fronts. And it brings you to this, which is the Nine of Pentacles, right? This is a card of self-sufficiency. It's a card of being able to take care of yourself and all of your own things. But, but more than that, it feels like pulling your energy back to you because, you know, this, the, the, this boat is sailing towards this person here. And the, the thing that I felt about Gemini's is that your, your energy has been very scattered for quite a long time. You, you, you've been trying to fight on so many fronts that there was very little left inside. You've been incredibly depleted. And it feels like you're kind of building yourself back up again, right? You're picking your battles, favouring your own peace over, you know, lots of other things. And sailing towards this, this sense of completeness and content here, right? In your own skin, in your own body. Like even this this chap that's there, like right, she's got a back to him. Yeah. And if sorry, there's an email just popped up from my children's school then. I'm, I'm waiting for them to announce that uh, they're closing all the schools for the next month, so I was just like, whoa. Anyway. <clears throat> a real sense of you Pulling your energy in, re-diverting it into you and becoming strong internally off the back of it, right? Realising how depleted you have been by fighting all of these battles and looking to put it straight. And I love that because then we come to the Six of Pentacles, which is all about balance, right? But sometimes this card can talk about charity and sometimes it can talk about external people coming in and, and balancing out situations for you that have been uneven in some way. And, you know, particularly when that's in regard to things like material resources, you know, that's someone coming in and kind of lending you a hand. But because it's come up with the Nine of the nine of pentacles particularly like this feels like you filling your own cup this is you taking care of your own business and your business first and foremost is keeping you well and making sure that you have the energy to do the things that you want to do instead of having to fight everyone all of the time right so this is tremendously healthy approach i really really like it it's very mature as well super mature i have no idea why it's suddenly so bright because it's stormy as fuck outside and it's black over there it's just a little bit of sunshine over there but it's enough to pass the camera out so sorry about that mm. right let's get th let's get three cards that's actually i'm going to just show you that because that's the second time that i've seen that card just drop out randomly it's the high priestess i think what's gone along with all of this that you've discovered about yourself is that actually you're connecting to your intuition in a way that perhaps you didn't so much before because your energy was so scattered because and fractured right <clears throat> as you're pulling all of yourself and your energy back to yourself so you are connecting with your your intuition and it's becoming stronger or it feels like it's getting stronger like that little voice is is speaking more clearly to you and it's guiding you effectively that's ace that's that's cool that's rock. right three cards for what's coming towards gemini please for the last two weeks of march oh, yay. two more cards for gemini please oh. Okay, well, this is intriguing. The first card that you have, well, actually, fuck it. No, let's go. Let's go to the shadow cards first. <clears throat> We've got the Four of Wands at the bottom of the deck. The Four of Wands for me, right, as well as the Twin Flame card, I'm going to throw that out because it's a thing and, you know, but it's not nearly as a, a common thing as the internet would have you believe it is at the moment, right? This is, That is not... I'll save my rant about Twin Flames for another time, but let, let, just suffice it to say, yes, it is a subdivision of Soulmate, but no, it's not what you want to go looking for, right? Hands down, that's absolutely not. However, if you are in a Twin Flame situation, just be aware, right? That's under there. Maybe it's there because what you've been moving away from is a situation that involved a Twin Flame. Just gonna throw it out there. If you don't have something like that going on, then for me, the Four of Wands talks about home, right? It talks about 
those people, those places, those situations, those circumstances that you find yourself in, where you are just comfortable, where that is your home, right? And it could be even that with the growing and the maturing and the leveling up that you're doing, the, 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 your ability to repair what has been depleted within you, you're starting to get a new, new um, I've forgotten the word that I was after, a new reverence for your home, your space, your sanctuary, your energetic space as well, possibly. I think I might come back to that in a second. The first card you've got for what's coming towards you is Temperance, right? And that's the card of Sagittarius. So it could be that there's a Sagittarian in your midst, and if it is, then that's cool, because <clears throat> I'm really digging Sagittarian energy at the moment. Like, it's... Uh, they're on a bit of a mission, the Sagittarians, and they always feel a bit like incarnate angels to me anyway, but they just seem to be on a massive healing mission for anybody in their environment. So if you've got one knocking around, then that's a cool thing. If not, it is, as I said, a very healing energy, right? And it feels like the work that you have been doing, the energy that you are sitting in at the moment is healing you on such a fundamental level, you have no idea, right? It's peace again. Do you remember how I said it felt like you were honouring your own sense of peace more now? This is a continuation of that. And in doing so, you are healing something quite profoundly within you. And then we have the next two cards. And I am going to break my roll and I'm going to pull some clarifiers because what we seem to have here is the Page of Swords and the Six of Cups, right? The Page of Swords is a messenger, right? It's primarily his job. He gathers information, right? Where he gathers the message from the king and he takes it, he's an envoy, he takes it to, you know, another kingdom and gives them the message. Possibly. There are other things that he does as well. And then we've got the Six of Cups, which is for me a card of the past. Now, Ordinarily, I kind of read it in a past life sort of situation, sort of way, right? I don't know why, but it just kind of does. So it could be that what we've got coming in is some communication from someone in the past, right? As yet, there's no value judgment placed on that, right? for good or for ill, it's just flatly there. I'd need to pull some more cards to find out if this is something that you would welcome or something that you want to run for the fucking hills with. You have to take it as it resonates to you. <clears throat> it could be a message about your past. It could be a healing message about your past. Somebody gets in touch, tells you something that actually heals a wound from the past. That's possible. But I'm gonna pull some more cards and have a look, see what this thing is. These two cards together, the Four of Wands and the Six of Cups, that for me is a soulmate. It's a soulmate energy, right? Because I favour the past lives over, you know, just the past. That is soulmate energy to me. So, I'm going to pull some more cards and see if I can't work out what the fuck is going on. <clears throat> All right, Page of Swords, please. There's a Page of Swords here. I only wanted one more card in addition to the one that I had, but I, and I got two. The first card that I got was the King of Pentacles, right? And that could be a Capricorn, Virgo, Taurus. The second card and the third card that jumped out together were the Queen of Pentacles and the Page of Swords. Now, before I say anything else, I'm just going to get some more for the Six of Cups. Because that's a pair there, King and Queen of Pentacles that we've got. Tell me about the Six of Cups. Where's the Six of Cups here? Whoa. Hello. Star. And the Six of Cups. And 
justice. Okay, at the bottom of the deck we've got the lovers and the tower and the knight of cups. You see where I'm going with this, right? <coughs> I'm going to start with the Six of Cups and then move backwards, right? The Six of Cups is the past, it's a soulmate, possibly, right? Soulmate energy, but definitely someone from your past. And the two cards that you got are the Star and Justice, right? This is someone from the past who is hoping to be able to fix something that was, is currently broken, right? They're working on trust, they want to heal it. It's two cards of healing we've got here. But this one speaks more of trust and hope than temperance does. I can't believe how fucking... <sighs> Sorry, my dudes. Let's see if that helps. Not at all. Okay. This is someone who hopes, you know, beyond measure. They're kind of pleading up at the stars. This is someone who is really, really hoping to fix something from the past, right? And I... My assumption is that it's broken because the justice card is about doing the right thing, right? And when you're talking about doing the right thing and fixing things and having a hope for doing so, the corollary of that is that there's something, there's a situation of some description that needs to be fixed, right? Because it was broken by them at some point. And then we got this page of swords, right? Messenger. The thing with the Page of Swords, and particularly like these two, the, these two Page of Swords, right? Neither of them look, oh, it's fucking washed out to fuck. Neither of them look particularly happy about the message that they're bringing, right? It's usually a message you don't want to hear. This is the thing. Right? They both look quite grave. This one looks like he's going to fucking stab the fuck out of something, right? Whatever this message is, whoever this is coming in to speak to you, who wants to fix things, who hopes very strongly to be able to fix things with you, right? this is somebody that you potentially have left behind for a fucking good reason, right? And they're coming in. And these two are the cards that are underneath the page of swords. I see that one. Like, whoa. Like blank. I have no idea why the camera's so washed out, right? But that is the King and Queen of Pentacles, even though it looks like they're just blank squares. I can assure you they're not. There's a load of detail on those cards. <clears throat> and that's a pair. Mm -hmm. Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo, potentially. Doesn't need to be the sun sign. It could be somewhere in their chart. Or they could just present with the energies of that, right? Because this is a couple who are building a home together, right? All of the earth energy is about nurturing, it's about growing, it's about building, right? It's a foundational energy on which you build slowly, but in a way that will last forever, right? I mean, it's usually depicted with, you know, great vines and stuff all around it because, because there's a sense of, of time and care and effort put into the creation of, you know, the court of the pentacles. Now, I'm going to draw your attention back to right at the start, we had the Nine of Pentacles and the Six of Pentacles. So it seems like you're kind of rocking a new stable energy, a new pentacle energy, kicking out that vibration. And it seems like somebody's heard that and somebody wants to come in with you and build on it together. They want to make you their queen of pentacles like you're already rocking that queen of pentacle energy or their king of pentacles you know however however it applies to you <coughs> you've stabilized yourself so much you've grounded yourself so much you've grown up so much like you are now a very stable energy and somebody wants to come in and be that counterpart to that stable energy you know the good thing is that they're, they're showing up as as an actual counterpart so that's a good thing <sighs> but i don't feel like you're going to particularly welcome this approach Tell me more about the king and queen of pentacles please 
King and Queen of Pentacles. Mm. We've got the King of Swords, the Seven of Cups, and the Chariot. Which honestly doesn't really tell me how you're going to receive it. But I'll tell you a, li a few, couple of little things about it, right? So we've got the King of Swords, right? And the King of Swords, it's, it's air sign energy, so it's your energy, right? And Gemini, Aquarius, Libra, strictly Aquarius. But this is somebody who is, it's your energy, right? It's very discerning energy. It's about taking all of the facts of everything and then making a very reasoned, very logical decision. Right. The next card that you've got is the Seven of Cups. And this is this is quite a funny depiction of the Seven of Cups, right? I, I always think that you're given to be this little character down here, this little boy hiding behind a rock while all these big beasties are running around down there. Right. <clears throat> and this King of Swords is... He's standing in the snow, he's wrapped up in a, in a cloak of some description, and he seems to be consulting with this, this little old kind of know-me dude down here who seems to be dispensing wisdom. You know, he's looking at him and he's, going, he's doing the thing, right? Maybe this is why you needed to get in touch with your intuition a little bit, because these seem like two different responses, right? Uh, this one looks a little bit scary, and this is the emotional one, right? The Seven of Cups can be about illusion. It can be about you know, being overwhelmed with choice. It can be about it being entirely confused about the situation. But then we've got this here, right? And this is a card of absolutely putting emotion to one side, all these feelings of confusion, all this kind of thing. Consult with this little dude here, who I really do think is your intuition. It's your higher self. Whoever. It's whoever you fucking stabilized with this energy here. Consult here and then make a decision about how you want to move forwards because then you've got the chariot. Mm -hmm. Card number seven of the Major Arcana. And it's, it's the card of cancer, but it's very much the card of the self, right? These two together talk to me about making a decision that is based purely on what you want, you think, and what you know, it's not being press ganged into anything. It's, it's, it's making all those decisions for yourself and for your higher good, your betterment, all that kind of thing, without taking anything else into consideration. Like, this is a pretty scary depiction for the Seven of Cups. Like, I feel that, like, the, the, this return of this person <clears throat> is going to put the fucking willies up you. Like, if you excuse my, my phrasing. Like, <clears throat> it's going to freak you out quite hard, and I feel like it's going to make you feel like you need to run for the hills, but... I don't think you need to. I certainly don't see you welcoming them back in. But, by the same token, you know, you're coming straight out with the King of Swords. If you've got something to say, you're going to say it. If you've got something that you think you're going to, you know, you're not going to leave that person under any illusion as to what you think. You're going to be able to communicate very clearly what you think. But you're going to be able to think very clearly about what you want as well. There's no sense of you being chased into making a decision. And you will move forwards by yourself, you know, for your own betterment. And not because somebody else is coming along and showing you attention and feeling like that's what they want you to do, right? So let's get you some cards of advice. Three cards of advice for Gemini, please. Fuck. Three cards of advice for Gemini. Oh. 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 The card on the bottom of the deck is the chariot. Again, right? Trust yourself. Make an intellectual decision, a reasoned, a rational decision about what it is that you want. The three cards that you've got are all major arcana, and I'm not really surprised. Because this feels a little bit like a... I hate to use the word test, right? It's more like a kind of checkpoint, 
right? You appear to have done all of the work. You appear to have leveled up. So here's a thing that's going to really fucking knock you sideways to see how you react and see if you, you know, react the way you always used to or whether this is, this is now a new you, right? Because the cards that we've got, the judgment, the hanged man and the fool, right? And these are all cards of advice. Judgment for me, do you remember how I said about 10 minutes ago, like, there's a reason why you fucking left them back in the past, right? The judgment card to me says, consider that, right? Think objectively about why it is that it, they're not a part of your life at the moment. You've done so much work on yourself. You've leveled up. You have changed. You, your personality is different. You are not courting drama anymore. And you're preserving your own peace, right? Is this someone that you really want to let back in? Because I think if you think about it objectively, it probably isn't. But that decision needs to be yours. And then we've got the hanged man, which is a very passive energy, right? <clears throat> talks about hanging yourself upside down, suspending yourself, you know, for to, to achieve greater knowledge and all that kind of thing. But what it is, is waiting. It's don't be rushed into making a decision. And like that, that's that's very much a feeling I got off this card here. It was being bulldozed, being rushed to make a decision. Mm -mm. No. You put your boundaries in place, you know, and if it's not an instant no that you come back with, if you need time to think about it, then express that. Me? Okay? If they don't respect what you've asked for, that space to make the decision, that tells you everything that you need to know, I think. And then we've got the full new start. I don't think you're going to take this person with you on this new start. I think that you are a new person. And I think that this person coming in, this not test, you know, energetic checkpoint or whatever, <clears throat> as much as anything else, it underlines to you how far you've come since the last time you dealt with this person, right? And this is important to know because this is you going off on uncharted territory. And that uncharted territory is moving forwards with the knowledge that you are strong enough to turn away this person who I imagine was probably part of the reason why you felt quite unbalanced before at some point in the past, right? You can move on without them very strongly. I mean, you could, uh, in, card, in terms of, you know, new starts and, and all that kind of thing, it doesn't, doesn't get any more profound than the fool. Like, that, that's it. That's, that's the card moving forwards. So, that's what I have for you, Gemini. Don't be frightened. It'll be fine. Um, as ever, if you like, uh, if the video resonated at all, um, I love it if you'd like it. If you'd subscribe if you haven't already. All that kind of jazz. Um... But if not, not to worry, and I will see you in about 10, 12 days for the April monthly videos. Uh, but yeah, best of luck. Take care.